The Wallabot is one of those products I've been watching for a while now, but because it was only available for the Android, I couldn't use it until this, the DIY 2, was released, and it is compatible with iOS devices. Let's hop into the review and check it out. Opening the box, I'm you know, already impressed by the Wallabot, honestly. The user manual that comes with it is very straightforward. I'm not gonna spend any time going through the details of that. Just know that it's pretty self-explanatory and easy to use. The device itself is shipped upside down on the box to, uh, to hold it in place better. And just looking at it, aesthetically speaking, very nice. Clearly marked, place this side against the wall, but it does look like a really nice device out of the box. The size of it is really nice too. That is smartphone thin and the weight is really good. It's actually very, very light. When you go to the back of the box, it includes a charging cable. This is just your standard USB 3 to USB-C cable. Nothing fancy here, uh, but when you look at the bottom of the device itself, that's where the USB-C port is where you would connect your charging cable. Now, I bought the kit when I bought my Wallabot, so it came with the device as well as this Wallabot branded carrying case to protect it. Nice case, you know, nothing crazy special about it. But it does have a nice pocket on the inside, the mesh pocket where you can put your charging cable or whatever else you want to put in there. And on the right hand side has the strap holder for the Wallabot DIY 2 device itself. And it fits nicely, nice and snug. The zipper is a nice zipper, seems to be you know not too heavy all combined. Coming back to the size of the device, this is my uh, iPhone uh, Max and it is basically identical in width. The iPhone was a little bit longer, but it is same width, same depth, uh, just the height that's the difference. Before you get started with the DIY 2, make sure you charge it. So like I said before, just connect that USB-C cable to the bottom of the device itself. Um, there's no charging block. We have USB chargers in our outlets in the house, so I just go ahead and connect, and you see the little amber light come on right next to the cable. Didn't take too long to charge. But to power it on, go ahead and hit the purple button on the bottom, flashes amber and then blue, and then you'll wanna go ahead and get it connected to your phone. It does connect via Wi-Fi. So after you download the app, it walks you through the instructions to get it connected directly to your device. It is not a Bluetooth connection. It really is a Wi-Fi connection. So you have to do it every single time. Getting your phone connected to the Wallabot, as you can see, is not incredibly tough. It does connect via Wi-Fi though, and I'm not quite sure why. That is one criticism that I have of the product so far, and it's a minor one, but Bluetooth would be nice, a little bit more of a seamless connection to your phone. The reason I say that is every time you wanna use the device, you have to go through those steps every time. And every time you walk up to a wall, you have to recalibrate the device every time. Now, honestly, you could see that as an advantage because it's not just a typical stud finder you would put on the wall. You're actually telling the wall about what your wall consists of. It's doing some scans to understand what's behind the wall to potentially give you more of an accurate scan. Speaking of which, let's head to a few walls on the house and see how it performs. Once you get the phone connected, you have to go through a calibration process. And as you can see in the app on the right hand side, I'm just showing you what's on my screen. They show you putting the wall about on the wall, and then you go ahead and hit the next part. You have to move it in a circular motion to calibrate it. One thing that you'll wanna make sure you do is go in large circles with this. If you go in small circles, it'll actually alert you that you need to scan a larger area. Really, this is just the wall about trying to get an idea of what's behind the walls and how it's going to image it. You have to do this on every wall. But once you get that done, you can go ahead and hop into the scanning just by tapping on start scan. And it starts in image mode. And this is what image mode looks like. So I know I have a stud here. And when you come across the stud and actually there's an electrical wire to the left of it, um, it'll show the wire, it'll show the stud, and it'll show the center of the stud, which is nice. Now I picked this wall because I knew I had an electrical wire running in this area just to test it. But as I come across, I had a weird flash there. So I've seen this with the wall about a few times on different walls where it flashes a couple of times thinking there's something else there, but there's really not. 
Uh, we'll get to that more here in a moment, but when you get to the stud, it's really nice. It gives you a nice way to get to the center of it by putting those dotted lines right there for you. But expert mode is where the rubber really hits the road with this device, in my opinion. This gives you more of a heat map imaging of what it sees behind the wall, so you know when you're coming across something. So those areas that I passed over the first time that were flashing, I get nothing in expert mode. But when I get to the stud and the electrical wire off to the left of it, it absolutely catches it in the heat mapping. Really nice feature. You can flip to the image, you can flip to the expert. They're both really nice. The image is really nice to see what's what. And you know, the, the expert just shows you more heat mapping. Now the second wall that we used in the house, I knew that I had some plumbing behind the wall in addition to the studs. Uh, and this is the section on the other side of the wall, there's actually a bathroom sink. So I've got a stud right there, and then I knew the water pipe is just to the right of the stud in that section, and it picked it up very cleanly. I was actually very impressed with how easily it grabbed that. Didn't even have to flip over to expert mode to make that work. It literally just worked out of the box, for lack of a better way to put it. But then I went to this wall. Now this is a different wall in our house. We put stick wood on top of this wall to just add a little bit of an accent in our dining room. When you recalibrate, you have to make sure that you get this large area, and this is a tough wall to move the wall about across because it's stick wood. It's grabbing as I do it. But scanning is important. So as we hop into the app here, we're gonna start to see what's behind the wall. Now I went straight to expert mode and then flipped over to image by mistake. Uh, I was an expert, but image, it just, it was all over the place with this wall. Now that is an actual stud behind the wall. I know it's there, I have an electrical outlet below, but you can see the different flashes that are happen happening as I move across the wall here. And really it was just tough in image mode for this wall. But if I flipped over to expert mode, this is where it really helped significantly. I know there's a stud right here and it's picking it up perfectly. All of these other areas, it's showing these dotted lines and giving an indication that there might be something there, but the heat mapping is not showing up until you hit the stud. The expert mode in addition to the image is really a nice feature that I don't get with a regular wall stud finder. So overall, based on all of the tests that we've done as a part of this video, as well as the way that we've just used it generally around our house so far, I would say that I've been very pleased with how the Wallabot has performed. It's actually exceeded my expectations in a couple of scenarios, especially when you consider the ability to go from the image mode to the expert mode. But the big question is, is it worth the spend? Now, as of the time of the recording of this video, the Wallabot DIY 2 with its case, the kit that you can buy, was right around $150. And I would say that if you're gonna be doing enough work in your home, it is absolutely worth the spend to pick one of these up. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please mash that like button or maybe just give it a little poke, as my friend Chris would say. And I would also love it if you would subscribe to our channel. Until the next time, keep doing it yourself.